you guys gotta forgive me, I just had an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> so if there's any like chocolate, you gotta get that out. Uh, good first scrimmage, I thought the compete was high. Offense really moved the ball early on, had some early success. Our defense had two big stops in two minutes. Um, it was impressive on their side. Plenty of room for improvement on both sides of the ball, but there was good compete. Um, it's that first time you get to see guys actually go tackle, and I think uh, there's some nervousness around that to start, but, but the guys pulled the trigger and were able to finish. Um, relatively clean from a penalty standpoint, and I think we can still continue to get better there. Um, all, of our, all of our quarterbacks, you actually pull their stats afterwards, and you're like, wow, they kind of had very similar days. You know, uh, I think all of them had success, all had scored touchdowns uh, two, through picks. Um, you know, we talk about taking care of the ball, but in general, you know, very similar performances across the board by those guys. Um, overall, like I said, good compete, good first scrimmage, certainly not our standard, but we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. How much uh, intermingling and stuff like you did in the spring game did he do versus sticking with kind of personnel group things by way of, particularly for the offense, because that was a big change. For the yeah, we shuffled, we, we shuffled guys around, you know, the guys that are competing for positions still competing, um, so we rolled multiple groups. So no injuries or? Not that I'm going to talk about. You said a couple of picks, but overall with a fumble, you, you obviously prioritize protecting the football. Is that a positive for the most part? Uh, no, because we had turnovers, right? right? If you have one turnover, that's one too many. Now, on the same note, you know, our goal on defense is to be plus three every game. So there were takeaways. Some of those situations are going to be situations where you're going to say you got to throw the ball. So let's say it's fourth down in two minutes, you need a touchdown or to get in the field goal range. We're going to throw the ball. Right, so there's a chance there might be a pick where on a third down or a second down you might say an incomplete's okay. So we had a situation like that where we threw picks on must throw fourth downs, um, but ultimately still we want to do a better job of, of taking care of the ball. I think we were closer today. Like I said, for those to come in those situations, I think tells you a little bit about hey our, our quarterback's decision making. But we can certainly still get cleaner. How about explosives? Yeah, there were some. There were definitely some explosive plays today. I thought our offense did a good job with our tempo. Um, and creating some issues, you know, so we got to get better at that on uh, the defensive side of the ball But it was good to see that today. How did some of the younger guys do and, and which some which some of the younger guys? I guess impressed you today? You know, I'm gonna have to go back and like look at the film right to really see it because there's a lot more administration going on today I don't know if I saw a real uh, young guy stick out, you know, that really caught my eye um, But overall like I said our compete was pretty good. You talked about the nervousness in uh, and like some people being able to tackle. Coach Polish, he mentioned he made a comparison to like a red light, green light, yellow light. Uh, how do you get those guys? He said some of them are at like a yellow light where they're not sure about going yet. How do you get those guys to basically a green light before week one? Yeah, you train it, right? You need days like today where you get an opportunity to go live and, and go uh, full tilt boogie and, and see it happen. Um, that being said, you know, I, I think I said it before, if you bite as a puppy, you're going to bite as a dog. There's a piece of that to it too, right? Like. Guys that are good tacklers are going to be good tacklers, but you have to train it. We do a good job of working non-contact tackling, if that makes sense. Training where your eyes are at, how you're going to work a finish. But days like today are days that you see it, right? It's like get them down. It doesn't matter how you get them down. There's some of those moments today. Did you see guys play green to the extent you would like? Oh, no, I definitely want more green. You know, now we weren't, hey, we weren't way behind the curve. Like guys were, were going today, um, but I, I'm always looking for a little bit more. Who's making up the left side of the offensive line? We had a couple guys shuffling over there. With the two-minute drills, were there any defensive guys who kind of caught your eye? Um, not necessarily. Like I said, we had a big pick. I think it was Bennett there on the first series. Had a big pick at the end. Um, and, and it was interesting in our pre-practice pre, uh, team meeting, you know, we showed a clip of Rice and UAB several years ago, back when Coach Maringer was at Rice. Uh, Rice is going in to score. They throw an interception to UAB. UAB, instead of dropping right there, right, has an opportunity to, to win the game if they go down. They start to return it back and they fumble it back to Rice. Rice goes down and scores the win. So we saw that exact scenario today, interception, and our defense went down. So it's fun to see moments like that start to be uh, reciprocated in practice. It's solid to be good. You know, I'm not talking about injuries. Do you guys break this scrimmage down like you would a game? Like you guys go on film and position group by position group break down? Things. What's the evaluation process after this? We, we're watching it in sequence. Uh, we'll grade every single play, right? So positive, negative, every single play. Um, just like that, we talk to the players about going to the doctor and seeing what, what medicine we got to take and, and what we have to fix. We'll do the same thing. Um, you know, when it comes to us as coaches, we'll do a write up. What tools do we have in our tool belt that we feel like we need to carry into the season, right? And then what do we need to add? 
Um, and that's, you know, and we'll have a write up. We'll have a pretty extensive write up on offense, defense, and special teams on what we need to improve and make sure we get. Looking at those positives and negatives, if you had to pick a winner between the offense and the defense, who do you think won the day? I would have definitely said offense early. You know, they were definitely moving the ball and having some success early. I think defense late, you know, so it's it's good to see the yin and yang, um, but plenty to clean up on both sides. Great lessons from today that you hope to show up when you guys come back to practice next week? Certainly a lot, you know, um, in particular, not necessarily. I mean, I think it was just there's a lot of things to fix, small, minute pieces, and each one of us has to have ownership and take it. I've run on a lot of new specialists. This is their first time in a game like yeah. situation. What did you see from the new kickers and pops? You know, um, it's good to get those live kicks. I, I, I said this to Coach Lorg this morning. It's time for us to have a, a pressure punt with somebody actually rushing against us. And we created a couple of those scenarios. I thought overall our punters did a good job of punting. Um, we didn't get as many field goals in this uh, scrimmage as I wanted to. Um, we probably could have done a better job of working those in earlier in practice, um, but but they when we did, they hit some some big kicks there at the end. A um, couple kickoffs. We actually kind of worked every scenario special team in this moment, so a lot of guys got a lot of opportunities. I got to go back and watch it to see who performed the best. But overall, there were some good kicks. How the, the twos look in the secondary then, regardless of who they are individually, it's just a lot of guys who haven't had a lot of experience, whether it's the freshmen or guys like Parkins and Dickerson who are here. They just play a lot. So mm-hmm. what are the twos and threes looking like in the secondary? You know, again, I think the offense had the upper hand in moments. Um, there were some some explosive plays, but certainly not just against the two group or the one group. It was really a, a collectively across the board. Um, we got to get better there. We have guys that are hungry. What I was excited to see is I didn't see as many mental busts and errors. You know, a majority of our errors came um, because of the chaos that we created for ourselves, not necessarily because of the players making a mistake. So, um, but yeah, overall, I, I was pleased with where they're at. They're not there yet. We'll get the special teams from you guys as error free in kind of all aspects as you would like at this point. Say, say it one more time. Were you guys as error free in all aspects as you would like? Oh, no. No, certainly not. Um, you know, I think our snap operation, kick operation, all that stuff's really clean, but schematically um, being right, we, we got some more improvement to do. You got practice live returns? We went uh, tag off on the returner. Went live within the kick, the scrimmage kick, and then tag off on the returner. And then we, uh, similar to what we did in the spring game before. Crocker said that on Thursday, he felt like he was a little bit sluggish and felt like some of the other guys were a little sluggish. Like some guys brought it, some guys didn't. How did you feel like the energy as a whole was today? Yeah, I thought it was much better. You know, I think what happened there on Thursday is it's common on a day when you come from a day off, that next day people feel like they got to get their feet wet. And that's something we have to become elite at as a football team is the day off of, after an off day being elite and attacking that day. You said all the quarterbacks have scoring drives, regardless of who it is, I mean, that's cool, but... Do you feel that there is a leader of the group just yet? I don't know. I don't know. There is. I mean, we we uh, we certainly keep. Um, I think everybody's had shiny moments, and uh, I don't feel like there's one that's just separated themselves out from the other. Um, you know, I think there's there's certainly room for improvement at each one of those uh, for each one of those guys, and they uh, they've all had really good moments, and they've all had really poor moments now. Again, I'll say this: I feel really confident we have quarterbacks we can win with, which is a, a, a big positive. Do you view no one separating themselves yet as a good thing, or is that something where you would like to see someone start? I mean, I like to know that you have multiple quarterbacks you feel really good about, and that's where I'm at right now. Is I feel really good um, about that. That is the running back distribution today. Just good. Well, you know, our goal coming in was really to be kind of even across the board. I have to look at what our numbers were like, um, but we wanted to see what each one of those guys had. And we know what some of them have, but we were wanting to see. You know, each guy get touches and each guy get in the game. I'm looking at the updated uh, heights and weights now, one that stuck out to a lot of people is the Justin flow, obviously, the heights and weight. And for those of a certain area, the 220 pound inside linebacker is unusual. I don't like to count players, but Nicobe was awfully close in terms of field. Yeah, I think he's, what, 217 whenever he played there. Um, so, you know, there's certainly, there's, there's target height weights for certain guys. Um, that being said, like I'm, I feel really confident that Justin Flores put himself in position to be able to play football at a high level. A lot of players. Last have, question. A lot of players have emphasized the communication between the coaching staff and them. What is it about like a young coaching staff that is able to like, communicate well with you know 27 year old kids? You know, I wouldn't say it's necessarily young or not young. I think it's just a decision the coaches have to make. You know, there's been I've been around a lot of coaches that just don't feel like that's as important, and it's you know they're going to do whatever's necessary. But now I think we live in the day and age of why. My why coach, and I certainly believe that players are going to play harder for you when they know you care, right? And and I hired coaches that care, right? That was my big focus here is making sure I got guys that care about players and care about relationships. And when you have that, you're going to communicate. Right? If you don't have that, you won't. And 
regardless of age, I think that's important to be uh, part of our program. Thank, Thank you, you guys.